Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to consider the second order mixed partial and I'm going to try to define it as a limit. There's actually two second order mixed partials. What are they? So f sub xy and f sub yx. And I'm going to try to define each one of them as a limit. Well, what kind of limit do you expect? Each time you differentiate, what, how is the derivative defined? It's defined as a limit of a difference quotient, right? Yes. Now, how many times are you differentiating? Twice. Twice. So what you'll expect to get is you'll expect to get a double limit. You'll expect to get a limit of a limit. And that's what we will, in fact, see. Okay. Let, let's, let's start trying to calculate this. So this is f sub x sub y. So you're differentiating what function? f sub x. f sub x with respect to? y. y. So if you think about that as a difference quotient, what's that? So y minus y, y not y is, is in the denominator. What's in the numerator? f sub x. f sub x. That's the function you're trying to differentiate. x coordinate remains x naught. So y. And here you put the function of y minus the function of y naught. Let's call this 1. Is this all can capture? Yeah. Okay. Now, I want to, to go over what these two things are. These two. Because each of these itself is a limit. Okay. So what is f sub x of x naught comma y? Well, this is the partial derivative with respect to x of a function. So we should take limit as x approaches x naught. x naught. And it's a partial derivative of the function f. So you'll get f of mm -hmm. x y minus f of what? x naught. x naught and y. So it's y now, y naught? Yeah, because this is, a, this is like a point y which is like, which is close to but not equal to y. And we're doing the first one. Uh -huh. right. Okay, and now let's do f sub x of x naught comma y naught. Well, this will be the same as the above except we'll have y naught in place of y. Is that f of x comma y naught? Yeah. Minus f of? x naught comma y naught over what? x minus x naught. x minus x naught. So, so these two are the same. 2 and what are called 3 are the same except you have y naught in 3 and you have y in 2. Okay. Okay. So this, this y is just something which is close to y naught. Okay. Now we need to plug 2 and 3 into 1. So are we here? Yeah. Plug 2 and 3 into 1. Okay, so what do you get? You'll get f sub xy of x naught comma on. And now this is a, a big thing. So, what's this? So it's limit as y approaches y naught. So what are, what we are doing, we are just copy down 1 and wherever we see these expressions, we plug in the expressions for, from 2 and 3. So overall, what's the big denominator? Y minus Y naught. Y minus Y naught. Okay. What is the first expression? So you'll get limit X approaches X naught of f of x comma y minus f of x naught comma y over x minus x naught. Can I put both limit into the into the same limit sign? Sorry? Can I put both limit the equation two and three into the same limit sign? Because in both cases the x is the portion x naught. Uh -huh. I'll talk I'll talk about that in a moment. That's a good question.
Okay. Uh, let me write down the other one, uh, the other limit. I won't do the full procedure. I'll just try to write it down by using the symmetry between x and y. What should it be here? X of poetry is x not. X minus X naught. Mm -hmm. What will come here? Y approaches Y naught. Hmm? What do you get here? Y minus Y naught. Y minus Y naught. Yeah, and up here? F X Y minus F X Y naught. X Y naught. Minus why approaches? Why not? Is this all captured? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, f of x not y minus f of x not y not over y minus y. Okay, so these are the two limit expressions. Now repeat your question. Ah, uh, can we put equation two and three under the same limit sign? So what you're suggesting is this is limit minus limit and they both have the same approaching thing so you can limit of the difference of the difference of the limits that's what you want to use yes can we okay so that's an interesting question the the issue with doing that so if this partial exists so if this if this thing exists then that means that both these limits have to exist right for x uh, close to x naught Right? Okay. And so if, if it exists, then you can, then the limit of the difference is the difference of the limits. However, so this is a sort of subtle point. You have this concept of equality. The limit of the difference is the difference of the limits, but that's true only if both these limits individually exist. Right? Yeah. However, you can have a situation where the difference has a limit, but these two limits individually don't exist. Okay? So by the way, if, if you're watching this and you don't understand this part, that's that's fine. This is just a little small issue. So if, if both these limits, so so you could have a situation where if you simplified it the way you're suggesting, then that simplified limit does exist, but the actual partial derivative doesn't exist. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. The actual partial derivative, for that to exist, both these limits individually have to exist. Whereas if you simplified it the way you're suggesting, then that limit, that that simplified expression may exist without the actual partial existing. So in a, in, an, in a subsequent video where I'll, I'll actually simplify it according to what you're suggesting, uh, we'll see that, we, we'll see in fact that the simplified expressions are the same for both of these with a slight twist and, and that's something to talk about separately. But as such, for the definition, you have to keep it in this form. Okay.